All right, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to a Wednesday episode of my political soapbox. And more accurately, I'm going to kind of be talking about some things that maybe not necessarily are entirely political, but are definitely can definitely be used to take on a uh, political voice, right? So, as some of y'all can probably tell, uh, I've got the entire South highlighted in this for a very specific reason, because I'm going to be talking a little bit about local language, local insults and terms, and... I'm going to start by talking about two insults that are, I'm going to say the, they're the worst insults you can have leveled against you or level against another person in the South. Uh, there's one word I'm not going to be talking about today and it's a, a yeah, I'm just not going to talk about it because that's a, that is a different can of worms. Okay. That is a, different argument altogether that is a different discussion altogether but these two words i think a lot of people don't fully understand the history behind them don't fully understand the gravity behind them and don't understand why southerners are so hesitant uh, take it so seriously when someone says it says one of these words now also, some people are going to criticize me highlighting Oklahoma, Missouri, Kentucky, and West Virginia as Southern, and to a lesser extent, Southern Florida, but uh, Oklahoma, a lot of the eastern portion closer to Arkansas, and of course the southern portions, and especially the southeastern portions of Missouri are certainly Southern, uh, and most of Kentucky is Kentucky Southern, I mean. I, I think it's fair to say that. But anyway, so the first of these two words that I'm going to talk about is the word carpetbagger. And a carpetbagger is, and actually both of these words have origins in Reconstruction South, uh, the Reconstruction era, right? So a carpetbagger in that era was somebody who came down from the north to take advantage of political and economic conditions and realities in the south and often tried to change southern culture, southern politics, and southern law and culture to be more northern, okay? And they would typically carry their belongings in a bag or in a roll that was made of carpet or, you know, a rug or something like that. Hence the name carpet bagger, right? And they were looked on scornfully. And to an extent, there's a decent reason for that. It's because they were trying to change the South. Um, well, Southerners did not like being told what to do by Yankees. And the truth is, we still don't like to be told what to do by Yankees. And that actually often includes people who are more traditionally Western or Southwestern. Um, and I'm talking, of course, U.S. regions here. Um, we don't really have a lot of patience for those who tell us that we're living our life wrong. Uh, more accurately, we pretty much just flip them off and tell them to pound sand or, you know, something along those lines. Um, or we tell them, you know, bless, bless your heart, but you know, I'm doing all right here. Uh, you know, the South will do its own thing. You just got to let us do our own thing. Okay. And we'll make it work. Okay. We will make it work. But in the modern era that typically... The usage that I often seen is from 
Yanks, and again, this includes people out west, uh, coming here, fake adopting certain aspects of Southern culture, but keeping in their belief that they are better than native Southerners, more educated, more in tune with the nation or whatever, something like that, and that they know better how to run the South than we do. You know, we the native Southerners. And they often vote for people who either are not Southerners themselves, who are living in the South, so up living in the South, so other carpetbaggers, or they... Uh, run for office or vote for the other word that I'm going to be talking about, the other type of person I'm going to be talking about in this video. And I think the best example of someone who I think is worthy of the word uh, of being called a carpetbagger these days is Mike Bloomberg. You know, he doesn't want to come down here, but he's certainly of the mind of, well, actually, he kind of does want to come. He wants to be in D.C., which is basically right next door to the South. Um, but he's a Yank who is trying to tell us how, here in Virginia how to live our lives, considering he's bought off the governor, half the state legislature, and half the state senate, and he thinks that he knows better how to live our lives down here than we do. And that's just disgraceful. That's, that's not just wrong, but there's a reason why I don't have a problem with calling Mike Bloomberg a carpetbagger. I think it's a fairly worthy insult. And I think it's, I think it's warranted. You know, I think you need to be careful of the context in which you say them and around whom you say them because these do have a lot of, you know, Confederate sympathizing uh, connotations. Um, and, you know, some people, you know, see it as more neo-Confederate language, stuff like that. But I disagree. I think there is a time and a place for just about every word in the English language. I think you have to know exactly what you're, you know, the background of this. And of course, by explaining this, I'm trying to show that these words are a lot more nuanced and a lot more well-defined than I think a lot of people will see them as. Um, because a lot of people say carpetbagger, oh, that's just the word Southerners used to describe Yankees who would move down south. Well, no, it had a very specific context because we don't hate people who move down here, recognize that they're not quite Southern, but they also don't want to change what fundamentally makes us Southern. You know, we like our guns. We admittedly like our vices. We are, you know, the type of people who... Yeah, our food is not healthy, but, you know, we don't care. And just let us live our lives in peace, and, you know, you can do whatever you want. Though Those types of people who just let us live our lives, we don't have a problem with them when they move down here. You know, we welcome with them. We, we'll welcome them with open arms. But, anyway. So, moving on to the... Next word. This one, I would argue, is a lot more serious of an insult or an accusation to level. And it needs to be done... I would almost say you need to be extremely careful with this one. Because if, you know, if the word carpetbagger could be used, you know has, you know, can get you accused of being a neo-confederate or a confederate sympathizer. Uh, this one, a lot of people may actually think it genuinely makes you one. And that's the word scalawag. 
the origin of this, as far as I can tell, is at least in terms of the linguistic origin, not necessarily definition origin. Again, the origin of the use in America and specifically as a particularly Southern word um, is reconstruction. But, you know, I can think the, the only real linguistic and lexiconic um, origin I can think of is the word scallywag, which is more of a pirate word, but whatever. And basically meant for someone who's disreputable and, you know, not trustworthy and not company you should be trying to keep. That sort of thing, right? And in a way, that's exactly what it was originally used for in, in, in Reconstruction by Southerners. However, it had a very specific meaning. A scalawag was someone who you consider to be a traitor to the South. And this is where a lot of people will start saying, oh my god, you must be some sort of white supremacist, neo-confederate or whatever. But not necessarily. So originally, it was primarily used to describe specifically Southerners who took more northern political position, uh, political beliefs, um, as well as did not think Reconstruction was going as far as it needed to in order to properly ins ensure the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments were, were enforced. These were Southerners who, for the most part, thought carpetbaggers really did know better. Um, these were Southerners who thought that the South was backwards and needed to evolve um, culturally, politically, economically. Instead of being a prim primarily agrarian society, you know, they were talking about industrialization and stuff like that. And... That's not to say that the South didn't need some level of industrialization. However, the truth is you can really only industrialize in certain areas of the South, and the South needs to take advantage of the agrarian production that we have and the fertile soil that we have. Um, and truth is, I probably would have been called a scalawag back in Reconstruction. However... More modern usage is basically any Southerner who considers the South to be backwards culturally, economically, politically. Are there certain flaws with the South? Certainly. I, I think there are quite a few, and I think the legacy of segregation is certainly certainly has a part to play in it. However... By implying the South is backwards, you're culturally you're implying that we need to change the way we eat, we need to change the way we talk, we need to change the way we uh, converse, we need to change, you know, the what our love of the outdoors, of hunting, of fishing, of you know. Go, you know, we go to church. There's a reason why a lot of the South is in what's called the Bible Belt. We're fairly religious by implying that that major pillar of our culture down here is backwards. Then you're saying that we need to drop our religiosity. I, I think that's ridiculous. And I think that that's not enough, though. That's not enough, okay? But it's certainly deeply insulting to people down here, especially if you're from the South and you're saying that. Are there certain things that definitely probably should be changed? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't... I'm not going to say that, you know, we're perfect. I think that's a ludicrous position. But we have to figure things out on our own. We need to have that discussion on our own. 
But economically, they're going to say, well, the South needs to adopt more benevolent government stances such as those of the states of New York and New Jersey and Maryland and Boston and California and Seattle, uh, up in Washington and Chicago and Illinois, you know. Or places that most Southerners would refer to as, uh, well, it depends on how well off you are. Rednecks would probably call them shitholes. Um, more educated Southerners would probably call them uh, modern fife, uh, modern modern fifes. Or, f yeah, Fife is the way that word's pronounced. Uh, modern feudal estates, basically. Something like that. And there is some level of truth to that. Um, because each of those places is ruled by the local elites, be they financial, political, or, uh, you know, celeb celebrity. Um But moving back, you know, though, that's also just, that's insulting for someone to claim, from the South to claim that. Are there certain things we need to change in the South in terms of our economics? Yeah, certainly. But establishing a welfare state is not in the South's best interest. It really isn't. I don't think it's in the nation's best interest, but it's certainly not in the South's best interest. Now, moving on to the third one, which is politically, there are a lot of Southerners who think that we need to adopt the politics of places like California and New York and uh Illinois and Washington, especially the urban centers of these heavy, heavily blue states. Now, that's not to say that there are democratic policies that do make sense and would be great here in the South. Um, I think marijuana legalization would be a massive boom to the region and would cause a rapid growth in agriculture. You know, you could basically replace uh, tobacco production with marijuana growth. Um, it's just one thing. You know, you could turn that into the new cash crop down here. And all of a sudden, you're, you know, you got a lot. Um, manufacturing is kind of going, going down. But we've still got vast areas in the Appalachians that would be massive wind power producers and would turn Appalachia into the world's energy production forefront for the next 50 years, maybe longer. And then you've got Texas, which has a little bit of everything. They've got massive wide open spaces and wind filled areas. They've got massive agricultural fields, uh, you know, they're, they can become a massive trading economy. They can still manufacture. Um, Texas has a little bit of everything, and Texas always considers itself Texas first, but they're still a southern state. They are still a southern state. Uh, Georgia is a great example of a state that has a lot going for it. Same with Florida, but Florida is its own unique situation, okay? But Georgia especially, you know, you've got Savannah as a major trade and port, um, Atlanta as a gigantic financial and economic hub, uh, and you've got little, you've got uh, some ability in the nor very north of Georgia to produce uh, wind power so you can become a power producer there. Uh, you've got a lot of agricultural land. It, Georgia is another one of those states that has a little bit of everything. And Virginia to a lesser extent. Um, but Virginia is always going to be fine as long as they have the naval dockyards in the Hampton Roads area in Tidewater, Virginia. You've got the government sector. And as long as, you know, southwest Virginia where I live currently, 
I'm originally from Georgia, mind you, but or I live in Southwest Virginia, you know, this could be a wind producing area and that would, that would fix the problem of coal country dying. But a lot of people are kind of stuck in some of the old ways. So because people just don't like change, but we can still be an energy producer. We just have to find our own way to do it. Okay. And that's the thing. Should we progress? There are certain areas where I think, yes, we do need to find a way forward into more uh, environmentally friendly production, stuff like that, but we have to do it in our own way. And that's the important part. But a scalawag is going to say, no, 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 we need to radically change everything politically about this region. And oftentimes... They're the types of people who, like Governor Ralph Northam, kowtows to liberal elites. And this would even apply if it was a conservative elite. You know, a hyper-conservative elite. You know. But Governor Northam is kowtowing to an elite from New York City who has no other interest in Virginia than turning it into uh, his own pet project of politics and Northam is you know Governor Northam has sold our state to Mike Bloomberg that is the definition of a scalawag and I have zero problems calling Northam that and I have zero problems calling Mike Bloomberg a carpetbagger because both are true and I don't I do not level those words lightly. I really don't. If a Southerner thinks we're better off by trying to become the next California or New York by adopting the exact same policies, exact same economic breakdown, exact same culture as those areas, then I have zero problems using either of those two words. But anyway, I've kind of rambled on for long enough. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Remember, if you like the content, please leave a like, comment below, and, uh, you know, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I greatly appreciate it, and I am eternally grateful to everyone who has subscribed and commented and liked my videos uh, ever since I started this channel, but especially in recent years and the past couple of months have been extremely good to me in terms of growth. And I, I sincerely love all y'all for it. Um, anyway, like I said, have a nice day. I'll see y'all next time. Take it easy. Bye-bye.